Hello, my name is Sandra Timko and welcome to Lumen Christi. Genesis 129 and 30 says, God also said, see, I give you every seed bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed bearing fruit on it to be your food and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. Yep, he spoke everything into existence. And somebody that he spoke into existence that has been a great gift for me, everyone here at the studio today, and um, hopefully all of our viewing audiences, Dr. Marv Anderson from Traverse City, Michigan. This man is just an absolute wealth of knowledge. Um, before we get into this third segment on autism, for those of you who possibly have missed the first two segments and wonder, well, who is this man to speak with authority on all of this um, issue of uh, a current day plague is what autism is. I want to give you some of his credentials. Dr. Anderson's training includes graduation with honors from the University of Notre Dame. He is a graduate of Georgetown University School of Medicine. He completed his residency in internal medicine at Columbia's University College of Physicians and Surgeons. Harlem Hospital Center and is board certified in both internal medicine and clinical nutrition. He was also in the carcinogenesis branch of the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, Maryland. He is a retired assistant clinical professor of medicine at the University of Michigan Medical School, that would be Henry Ford Hospital. And then as time progressed, he left, uh, worked in a clinic uh, known as Abbas Place up near where he lives working with autistic children and well probably autistic adults as well oh yes um, the reality is you had a, a severe call on your life all of the wisdom and knowledge that you gained along the way you have seemed to be able to hone it and utilize sort through it and um, come up with some real prominent uh, measures of information that the medical community can use and uh, families to use this information to help curb this plight. We have the ability to curb the numbers and currently it is staggering that um, in the Amish community where your book chronicles three states population 250,000 Amish families, the numbers are only 20, 20 cases of autism. So that says they're doing something right. Our current numbers, tell us, doctor, what were the numbers again of the autistic? Well, the last count, and it was four years ago, now five years ago, one in 50. And uh, in Korea, it's one in 38. So what is that telling us? It's telling us that people are not taking the time prior to pregnancy to do a history search to see what their predisposition, predisposition for as far as health issues. Um, that they're not taking proper care of their liver and that they may be living in an environment or ingesting things that are just too toxic. So, you mentioned to me this morning an issue of this that I hadn't even considered. We talked slightly about all of these things which gives everybody a nice understanding of some of the things they can do. One thing that you mentioned that had never even occurred to me, I know that the man is called to be the spiritual lead of the home. And his role, of course, is to love his wife like Christ loves the church. Therefore, setting an example for the next generation, um, unconditional love. But he also has another role as far as making sure his family has health that I had never considered today. Share with us that situation that you shared with me this morning. Well, we talked about this morning about the four things that our food supply has. We, just to recapitulate, first of all, we choose the wrong food, which of course the father should have jurisdiction over. The second thing is the food is deplete, uh, bereft of its nutritional quality because of our farming practices, agricultural, commercial agricultural practices. The third thing is that the food is filled with pesticides and, uh, and, and, and ground contamination from all sorts of different chemical uh, waste. And the fourth thing is that our fertilizer that we put on the soil 
in many, many instances, contains filler that is really a dumping ground for industrial waste. They're using our fertilizer as a way of getting rid of industrial waste. So somewhere in amongst all this, the father of the family has to find a, a road uh, of what he can do. Now, I'd just like to divert just for a second and tell you a story. Mm -hmm. The story is about Sir Albert Howard. Albert Howard was a agricultural researcher in India. And on the eve of World War II, he wrote a book, it's still available, called The Agriculture and An Agricultural Testament. And what Sir Albert Howard wrote in that book, probably one of the most memorable lines, is, is that all civilizations have passed out of existence when their soil has become infertile. And when we don't take care of our garden soil, of our farm soil, then we can't live. Because you see, the soil is alive. The soil is alive. Uh, it contains organisms just like our GI tract contains organisms. And there is actually some continuum. Would you believe that? The mattresses of children that have lived on the farm have the same organisms in the mattresses that the farm animals have. And they must get there some way, right? Mm -hmm. So the father has to be aware of the importance of protecting his family from these dangerous environmental uh, elements. Uh, one of them would be to, to distance his family as far as possible from them. Now, people are going to go out here and say, Anderson said that we should all move to the farm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not possible for everybody. But it's relative, Sandra. The, the farther you place yourself away, the more distance you place between yourself and the source of the contamination, the better right. off you'll mm -hmm. be. You know, so it's a relative thing. Some people will not be able to leave the city. They'll have to depend on organic food. It would be the father's job then to provide that. But even organic food is still not nutritionally complete because of the commercial agricultural process. It costs a lot of money. Believe me, I'm a farmer. I know how much you can put into the soil. And if you're trying to make a profit, it, all these good nutrients may not get in there. So the, so the father would then have to provide some supplements to the family according to their needs, their individual, individual needs. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is, is that um, for those that are able to leave, we have to think of Meg Olmert, who wrote a book entitled Made for Each Other. It talks about the domestication of animals and how a substance called oxytocin which we give in a pit trip to cause women to have a, mm -hmm. to deliver. That same substance, oxytocin, is created in an animal and in a human being when they bond with one another. Now, farm animals and the animals on our farm are, are gently raised, you know, from, from the day of birth onward. When you go to our, into our barn, they all run toward you, you know. And this creates a flow of oxytocin. Now, Oxytocin is a tremendous anti-inflammatory compound for the intestine and for the brain. So by having our, our family as much as possible on the land, you know, what we have is this nice flow of oxytocin, which in itself is very healing. Plus, the children can understand and appreciate God by seeing him in nature. Natural contemplation, the song, How Great Thou Art, capitulates that. So all these benefits, and you know when children dream, they dream about animals. That's why McDonald's has all these little animals. 80% of a child's dreams before the age of five are about animals. So the dad has to find his place in all this. Now maybe he's a lawyer, or maybe he's a doctor, you know? And maybe he's very busy. But look what's happening to his family in the meantime. You know, maybe it would be better if he were a part-time farmer and a part-time worker somewhere. He could use his skills doing something and working part-time, and there, therefore he would be in calling, di in calling distance of his family, and he would always maintain that control over what his family eats and make sure that they get the best possible. It's, it's almost shocking how, um, well, of, of course, some of this changed a little bit when the uh, economy took a dive a few years ago. Just prior to that, the statistic was that the average family was eating out three to four times a week. And of course, after the crash, it had uh, dropped radically to only one time a week, the costs involved. The trade-off was the convenience of it. And 
when I'm listening to you talk, I'm thinking how many parents, just because of stressful lifestyle and um, lack of time constantly, opt for that. And you're saying long term or next generation, there could be some real problems with all of this. True? We just got done talking in an earlier session about how our genes mm -hmm. are regulated by what we eat. Mm -hmm. That's called epigenetics. And actually, epigenetics can even be passed on from one generation to another. An example would be folic acid from green vegetables, which turns genes on and off. Uh, so um, th so the, the mother, I'm glad to hear you mention the parents, Sandra, because the mothers have some role in this, too. Uh, food preparation is, is work, mm -hmm. you know? And it's very easy to pop in something into the microwave but the number of chemicals that are present in there and the preservatives, why well, the undertakers tell us we can't even get bodies to decompose anymore because of all the preservatives that are in them. You know. So uh, the, f the, 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 f the home should really be a food factory. Now for the family that has uh, someone who is autistic, they have to be even more conscientious about the food that's given, correct? Absolutely. And that's a very good point because naturally they're going to want to use gluten-free food, maybe casein-free food. Naturally they're going to want to use organic food. And when you go into the store and, and, and look at the prices of these things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's almost unaffordable. So that's why we advocate getting control of the food supply. You know, we're not talking about a great big plot of land. And chapter five in this book even tells you how to buy a piece of property that's farther away. You know, it gives all the guidelines. You know, you don't want to buy an old farm because it's full of the soil is full of all these chemicals and so on. Uh, but the idea is is to get the um, get the food wholesome and get control over it and have the mother produce it from what is produced right off the land, right off the tree, right off the vine, if possible. You know. So it's pure, fresh, and nutrient dense. And a very, very important thing has come about with Natasha Campbell McBride, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride in her book, The Gap Diet, brings out the importance of fermented foods. For years, we had depended just solely on antibiotics. But then we looked at civilizations um, like, uh, that, that have um, that have subsisted over the years, and they all had large amounts of fermented food in their diet. And we're, so we make uh, sauerkraut every week. We make uh, kefir. We make yogurt. I brought kefir and had some last night. Uh, brought it down with me, and that implants into the GI tract the normal organisms. Now, what I'm what I'm saying here is is that if we take over the food supply to, to, to some degree, we can produce it much more or less expensively. And it may be if you're stuck in an apartment on a 32nd floor of a, a condominium in New York, you know, you can still sprout green foods and you can still sprout foods on the windowsill, you know. Something, somebody, everybody can do something is what I'm trying to uh -huh. say. Now, because your cause is so huge, and you want people to get the word out that there are some real options here with preventing um, autism, working with it, um, just all these different aspects of it. You, you need people to spread the word. And uh, you need the help of many people so that you can make a difference legislatively. True? Absolutely. Um, you would like to see something that the government would agree with as far as a time frame for vaccinations or let the people know that they have that option or some of this information that um, you shared with us today. How are you going about this and how can people help you? Well, I have talked to congressmen. First of all, I'd like to go back just for a second and just, just answer that question that you, you said about, suppose you had a child that already has autism, mm -hmm. you know, how would you handle that child? Well, certainly, if that child is given the purest, freshest food that's possible, that's gonna help that child a lot. Mm -hmm. If that child can be taken 
out of the environment where, where it's toxic, you know, sometimes that makes the entire difference in itself. In a book, we describe a young man. It, mother went all over the country and got him well. And then they, they, they moved to the land as we advocated. Then they went down and visited the, the, the grandmother in Florida and the child completely reversed. As soon as they got back into the land, out in the country, the child reverted to normal. So, um, so especially an autistic child needs to be in, a, in a, the, the cleanest environment uh, that they can be in. Along with clean, stress. Stress-free helps? Oh, you, sh boy, you really hit the nail on the head there with stress. I have to, before we get to how people can help, I'd just like to do just a tiny little bit of biochemistry on that if I could. Mm -hmm. There is a hormone which makes people happy and allows them to sleep well called serotonin. Mm -hmm. And it comes from the amino acid tryptophan. Now, if there is stress, tryptophan doesn't go to serotonin. It goes down another pathway called the quinolinic acid production pathway. And quinolinic acid causes brain cells to self-destruct, to commit cell suicide. So what happens is, if there is stress, this could be infection, it could be inflammation, and it certainly is environmental stress. And we talk about in the iBrook version of our book, we talk about post-traumatic stress disorder in military people that have been serving in the, uh, in the Mideast because of the hypervigilance that they have to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exhibit. So what happens is the quinolytic acid causes the brain cells to self-destruct and then people are no longer able to, to think or use their, their whole brain and depression because of the suicide, because of the lowered serotonin, depression rears its head. We have a large amount of suicide. So stress is very, very important to deal with. And one of the ways you deal with stress is to remove yourself from it. And that's why we advocate a more pastoral life. Well, yes, but in a family that has autism to deal with, the stress level is magnified anyway. And um, just between the extra load when you have children that are functioning more normally, um, the chaos that it ensues, and then the stress between the man and the wife. Oh, yes. So this stress can add to that child with autism's um, behavioral problems. Right, and you know, we have to allow God's role in all this, mm -hmm. you know. We have to understand that, um, that, that families break up mm -hmm. because of this, that other children are not created, not procreated, because the numbers are, parents don't want to have, a, uh, have the risk of having another child. Um, and that uh, the most important thing I would say is, is that the child has a compromised ability may have a compromised ability to relate to God and to pray. Now, let me give you just a quick example. If you've ever tried to take a person with Alzheimer's disease and to see how well they pray, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes they have a great deal of difficulty doing that. It's, it's almost understood, you know. Well, that would be a model. We don't know what goes on in the autistic child's brain, mm -hmm. but we do suspect you know, that he's not able to reach his full capacity, which is our nature, which is what we were created for, to know, love, and serve God. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why we have to do something altogether to stem this plague. Now, if someone wants to have you come and speak to their organization, um, is there a phone number they can reach you at? They can reach me at 231-228-4567. And a website? It's autism at at it's not it's written out abbas place a b b a s no apostrophe abbas place dot com okay and we have an email too all right let's it's marv m-a-r-v everybody calls me marv uh -huh. marv d anderson a-n-d-e-r-s-o-n at gmail dot com if they would like to get a copy of this book the way to get a copy of the book, you can get it on the website. You can certainly call us or email us. It's available at, uh, from, uh, from um, 
Amazon? Amazon, Amazon. Amazon Books, yes. Both as a, a hard copy of the book. And just this week, we have introduced, February the 4th, we have introduced uh, the e-version of the book, which is a little updated and is also available on Apple iBooks. That's awesome. You had another piece of poetry. We only have a couple minutes left. So I'm going to read this scripture, and we're going to end with a fabulous close-up of your face and this piece of poetry that you have, okay? In, and, and thank you. I want to thank you now. Oh, you're very welcome. I, I appreciate so much that you've taken this time to share this, this lifelong passion with us. Praise God. Yes, praise God. In closing, from John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So, with that said, you know, it's pretty cold this morning, mm -hmm. and we have to, it's sort of frosty out there, so we have to probably borrow from a frosty poet, Robert Frost. Okay. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and being one traveler, long I stood, and peered down one as far as I could, until it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other just as fair, though perhaps it had the better claim, for it was grassy and wanted wear. But as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. So the two that morning equally lay in leaves no foot had trodden black. Oh, I marked the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I would ever come back. And I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in the wood, and I took the one last traveled by, and that has made all the difference. So I'm asking people to take that road less traveled, make those sacrifices, and I'd like to just say, if I could, that autism will end, prevention will prevail, good nutrition will, 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 will appear, everybody's health will improve, and I would like to say that it is fatiguing, certainly. It is, it is a bother, uh, and, but on the other hand, it is an absolute necessity. What I've said is indispensable, and if people do it, autism will end. Thank you so much. And again, if you would like to have Dr. Marv Anderson come and speak to your gathering, um, or you have questions and you'd like to email him, we're gonna give this information once more right from your mouth. Phone number? 231-228-4567. Email address? Marv D. Anderson with an O-N at gmail.com. And a website? Autism at A-T, autism at Abba's Place, A-B-B-A-S, no apostrophe, Abba's Place dot com. That's for daddy in the Bible. Yes, yes. Can you think of any other uh, form of reaching you or contacting you? Certainly look at the website and see the uh, other presentations on there. I think they'll find uh, very much information. And the book contains information that people of all ages can benefit from. It even tells you how to buy a piece of property in the country. Yes, that was amazing. And you do practice what you preach. You are living on a farm. You raise your own food and um, we Animals. have sheep and goats and baby donkeys and cats and rabbits and you come and say hello to all of them. It's awesome. It's awesome. Well, once again, I'd just like to uh, invite you to visit those uh, places on the internet that Dr. Marv mentioned. And as always, remember to let Christ's light shine through you. 